Arena Rule 15. <clears throat> Arena Rule 15. Use of the mallet. Um, probably the first thing that comes to mind is dangerous use of the mallet because we say that a lot. Um, same thing. So Rule 15, use of the mallet. You have to carry your mallet in your right hand. You can't carry it in a way that might hurt someone else. So it's just hold it straight up or down, but don't hold it out like a, like a jousting stick. You're going to joust somebody and then you're going to get in trouble. Okay. Um, you are responsible for your mallet at all times. Okay. So anything that happens with your mallet while it's attached to you or was attached to you is your problem. Know that. Okay. And be mindful of your mallet. It's very dangerous. It's actually a weapon. Um, so no slash hooking. That's hooking with unnecessary force. You must be in the vicinity of the ball to effectuate a hook. So if the player has a legitimate shot at the ball and you hook them, fine. If the ball is nowhere to be found and you hook them, foul. Can't do it. Cannot reach <clears throat> across, over, or under the opposing player's mount to make a hook or to do anything. It's a reach. You don't put your mallet where it doesn't belong. Okay, you can't reach across a horse. It's reaching. Foul. No full swings in close quarters. In the lineup, if you're going to take a full swing, um, you better not have anybody near you. And it, might, it better be clean because if it endangers anybody, it's a foul. Dangerous use of the mallet. This is all safety. Are you kind of getting the picture now? Um, no hitting your horse or another horse with your mallet. Intentionally, you're going you're gonna to get a yellow card. Um, accidentally, you might just get a penalty. Um, don't e ever even think about hitting anyone intentionally. That's not even on our radar. It never happens. Well, I, occasionally, but not worth mentioning. But anyway, um, windmills, helicopters. If you think you get fouled and you do a windmill or helicopter in addition to your regular appeal. You're probably going to be the one penalized. Um, what we'll do is we'll offset the penalty, if there even was one, with your helicopter and probably either throw it in or, or, or give you a yellow card and, and a penalty against you. Don't do it. Don't do it for celebration, even though it sounds nice. Celebration sounds great, but um, it, it can poke somebody in the eye. In fact, it has historically, and that's why the rule is there. Um, it's very dangerous. Okay, <clears throat> riding into a shot or hitting into a horse. I want to talk about this with you for a second because this is the one of the hardest calls the umpire has to make. Okay, you can't ride into somebody's swing when they're in the act of hitting a full swing. Okay, with that being said, you cannot hit into someone's horse. You can't take a full swing if someone's horse's head is in in the way of your mount. You can't do it hitting into a horse. So now you see where I'm going with this. Okay, it only takes a fraction of a second for this to happen, and the umpire is unsure whether it's riding into the shot or hitting into a horse. So here's your point of judgment and then you work it out however you work it out. If the horse was there before the swing started, then it's hitting into a horse. If nothing was there when the swing started and then the horse appeared, it's riding into the shot. Okay, now I don't care how good an umpire you think you are. I have sat in the um, instant replay booth looking at a replay of this play more than once and having to literally go frame by frame to see what happened first. That's how difficult this call can be. So your point of judgment, I just gave it to you. Use that point of judgment. However you work it out, you work it out. Um, it's not recommended, but it does happen sometimes that you have to offset both you really don't know what happened and then you give them a warning say hey don't ride into the shots hey be careful with your mount when you're when you're uh, taking a full swing you don't want to hit a horse and you throw it in um, so I'm some I've done that because it would be unfair for me to guess I'm not gonna guess I'm either gonna know um, and then assess the penalty and if I don't know then I'm not assessing a penalty but that's a tough call so at least you have your point of judgment now um, let's talk about hooks for a minute in the arena the hook must be below the horse's back that's the rule Okay. Outdoors it's the shoulder, player's shoulder, but indoors it's the horse's back. You must be on the same side of the, of the player, the same side of his mount to hook him or directly behind. Directly behind means no part of your horse, you, your clothing, the horse's tail can be on the other side of the, of the mallet of the player that you're hooking. Okay. So you're directly behind. You're going to effectuate a legal hook. Your horse swishes his tail and the tail is on the other side of the hitter's horse, it's a cross hook. And I've called those because it's a cross hook. So know that. Okay, one caveat before we finish. 
In Arena Polo 12 goals and over, the host tournament committee can make an election before the event begins to have hooks instead of being below the horse's back in the arena, can be below the player's shoulder. The host tournament committee can make that election. And then, then that will be the rule for that event. Um, if they don't make the election, it's the, it's the back of the horse. You cannot, the contact cannot be above the back of the horse. It must be below the horse's back. Um, when we do outdoor polo and indoor polo, sometimes close together, I'll mess this up because I'm, I'm so used to it being the shoulder line that, uh, that I'll mess it up. Um, but I, I try my best to remember we're in the arena, horse is back. Okay, that's rule 15, use of the mallet.